Good morning. This is Cecil and Blues. Thank you for joining me for another Final Fantasy XIV video. Today I'm giving you a summary of the Live Letter 21 hosted today on Twitch with live translation. It was a long presentation, but I'm going to try and sum it up as quickly as I can. I've had a pretty nasty cold, and uh, this is my first time recording in several days. I need to limit my speaking to avoid blowing out my voice. The presentation started with a music video for the Heaven Sword theme. Warning, it contains cutscene spoilers for both Patch 2.55 and 3.0 story missions. I'm not going to include any footage here, but you can check out the video uh, in a link I will include in the description of my video, and it'll link you over to the official Final Fantasy XIV YouTube channel. For the next hour, Yoshi P escorted us around a few of the new areas. There were some panic moments when he stumbled upon debug and development NPCs. I don't speak Japanese, so I don't know their exact purpose, but it's not really important. It should have no effect on us once the game releases. During the tour of Coorthus Western Highlands, it was demonstrated that the Fat Chocobo is, in fact, a flying mount. And it's that kind of silly fun that I really enjoy in Final Fantasy XIV. They also spoke briefly about the size of these areas, two or even five times as large as some of the old zones. This increased size provides open space for future, future content to be added without overlapping with existing content. They also spoke about how players will unlock the ability to fly in a zone by collecting etheric currents. Some are found during the main story, and others uh, must be found through exploration. I was unclear if this meant you would be able to fly in, like, sub-zones as you collected individual currents, or if you had to collect all the currents in a specific zone before you could fly there at all. Either way, I understand the limit. Flying is one of those MMO things that's really, really cool, but from a gameplay perspective, it opens up the door to detach yourself from the world and avoid the things that make it exciting and dangerous. Speaking of, there was an indication that monsters in Heaven Sword Zones could be much more dangerous to the players than things we found in A Realm Reborn Zones, particularly in the Beastman Strongholds, uh, or maybe there'll be, like, particular super strong monsters that patrol around, and if you bump into them, they could, you know, cause you a problem. Uh, after they finished touring us around uh, a couple of these zones, uh, they took a break, and then the second half of the presentation focused on how combat jobs would be changing. Uh, the footage I'm going to be showing you here, I'm just going to loop it. This was of a... Uh, a demonstration of kind of the different abilities uh, and uh, I will include a link to the YouTube version of it on the Final Fantasy official channel if you'd like to uh, see it maybe at a little bit higher resolution this was recorded off of the stream uh, and uh, this is just a small overview this took over an hour for them to cover and it it wasn't incredibly detailed I'm going to attempt to shorten that even further so if you want a full rundown of everything that's been covered I would suggest hitting up the official forums I will include a link to that in the video description as well all right black mages uh, they're getting a new tier 4 spell uh, for both fire and ice that do not refresh their astral or umbral auras uh, but it will interact with a new buff called uh, Enochian? I am not sure what that means. Uh, uh, but this will change your rotational priorities, and uh, it should change things up pretty dramatically for them, it sounds like. Paladins are getting additional defensive abilities that will, uh, like, uh, extend their defensive buffs to other party members. It sounds to me like Paladins may provide additional mitigation to the main tank, if they are in an off-tank role. As a note, all tanks will now get a bonus to their accuracy when they are in their tanking stances. This is to compensate for the fact that they are always attacking from the front of an enemy. Uh, warriors are gaining a more DPS-focused stance that builds an alternate resource labeled Abaddon. Uh, it's similar to Wrath, 
and it seems the goal is to further define the separation of the attacking and defending stances. Dark Knights were next. I am very excited about the Dark Knights. Where do you think Cecil and Blues comes from? In my mind, Cecil never stopped becoming a Dark Knight. Or being a Dark Knight. Whew. Come on, cold medicine. Work with me, not against me. I'm getting a little off topic, I assume. Let's take a look at the Dark Knight. They will get a DPS stance, and when in it, uh, it's going to drain their MP, and you'll need to maintain your MP yourself because you will be immune to MP restoring effects that come from other players. Uh, and while in your main tank role, uh, it's the only tank class uh, that will have a charge attack instead of a ranged pulling action like the shield throw or the axe throw that the paladin and warrior have. I'm not sure that I like that. I play as a monk and I find that the charge is extremely limited in comparison to the uh, limited range abilities that melee contemporaries have, dragoons and ninjas, they have uh, like ranged attacks they can use, and I find those to be more diverse. You know, they, there's a group of enemies and I only want to fight one of them. I can't pull them with a ranged attack. So, we'll we'll see how that works for a tank, but uh, I, I prefer having a single ranged ability as opposed to a charge. If they don't put a cooldown on the charge, that actually could be kind of neat for Dark Knights. Uh, kind of charge around and, and so forth. Uh, but I've probably spent too long talking about Dark Knight. Uh, moving on to Dagoon. Uh, the primary new mechanic is called Blood of the Dragon. It's a self buff that adds a fourth move in their combo and there is a strong attack that will consume the Blood of the Dragon buff. They are also making adjustments to the animation locks that jump attacks have, so hopefully you shouldn't get stuck in things, like if you go to do a jump attack and then a boss puts down a telegraph, you should be able to move out of it even while you're in your animation. Bards will be getting a new song called Wanderer's Minuet, which can be channeled at the same time as other songs, and it costs zero MP. It is essentially a stance for the bard, and it puts them in a siege mode, uh, to use a StarCraft term. Uh, it provides a significant increase to their damage output, but it is at the expense of their mobility. So, like, you're gonna lose your auto attacks, uh, you're gonna be able to charge up and shoot massive, like, powerful attacks. Uh, but if you move, you lose your buff, and then you have to kind of re reestablish it, it sounds like. Uh, moving on to Ninja, they said that no drastic changes have been made to Ninja, but they, that they were adding a weapon skill that will refresh Hutan. Uh, they hope that this will allow different ninjutsu to be used. Additionally, they said some abilities will now have positional requirements added to them, which, I mean... To me, sounds like a pretty drastic change. Monks, Dragoons, scooch on in, make some room for our new brothers and sisters. We'll all sit at this table where we complain about how bosses get turned around by tanks. Alright, let's move on to Monks. Uh, they will be getting a new tool, or, or uh, several new tools, that will make use of fading grease lightning stacks. Uh, when a fight is ending or during a phase transition. A new resource is also being added called Chakra, and it can be used to unleash a massive damage attack or to restore TP. Uh, but either way, um, we shouldn't have the situations that occur like during Garuda when she flies up and then comes back down and you lose all your stacks of uh, Grease Lightning, you should now, in preparation for that, be able to kind of unleash a powerful attack that consumes your Grease Lightning, uh, so it doesn't feel so punitive when you have to spend time building it back up again. Uh, what do we have next? The Machinist. Uh, this job, as I said earlier, I have a pretty strong affinity for, uh, because the second half of my handle comes from Blues which uh, American players will know as Proto-Man in the Mega Man series. The primary resource of the Machinist will use ammo. 
Uh, they can expend ammo to add additional effects to their weapon skills and to boost the damage of their combo attacks. The turrets constructed by machinists in some cases are more like buff stations, providing uh, some sort of buff aura to anyone who stands near them. Uh, and then uh, the last DPS job they talked about was Summoners. They are getting a new ability that uh, applies all of their DOTs at once. This ability is taking the name Tri Disaster, which is a previous ability, uh, which will now be given the name Tri Bind. They didn't feel that Tri Disaster really fit what the ability did, so they changed its name. Uh, there will be no new Eggies. Uh, to be added, but they are in the process of developing a system for summoners that will allow them to customize the appearance of their Eggies without changing their stats. Some changes are being added to complement the Aetherflow recast time and to ensure that the summoner always has something interesting to do. And they mentioned something about merging with your Eggie. I was really unclear about it, that something about turning into Bahamut or something. I, I don't know. I, did I mention I've been taking a lot of cold medicine? Alright. Uh, next, we talked about healing rolls, and I do not do a lot of healing in Final Fantasy XIV, so hopefully I understand how these changes work correctly. White mages are getting additional healing tools and are considered the pure healing class. A second instant heal will be given to them. Currently, they only have Benediction, which is a very powerful heal. Um, a second lower strength instant heal will be given to them that's on a shorter recast time. Uh, additionally, they'll be giving an AoE field that kind of like gives a, an HOT heal to anyone inside it. Um, as a note, uh, Protect, the White Mage signature buff, uh, will function at its full strength even when assigned as a secondary class ability uh, by a Scholar or an Astrologian. Scholars, uh, their actions have been modified to make them more thoughtful, and it may not seem obvious when participating in easier content, but when you are working on hard content, you will have to be more thoughtful I'm really sorry, I completely do not understand how scholars even work, so trying to parse out what these changes mean for a scholar is uh, just uh, baffling to me. Let's move on to the Astrologian. They discuss that when you draw a card, it will add an additional effect to your spell, and that there will be ways to compound these effects or to save them for future spells, or to shuffle them back into your deck and get some new effect if you don't like what you drew. This random element could make healing with astrologians really engaging, or it could make it really frustrating. I I don't know which, to be honest. Um, that was the end of the live stream. They ran way over time. I'm a little bit over time because I kept distracting myself, and I've only talked for 14 minutes. Uh, they went on for nearly three hours, um, and... Uh, the last thing they did was they showed a short video that kind of showed off the dungeons. Uh, I will include a link to that in the video description as well. Uh, go ahead and uh, if you are interested in kind of more details, you can check out uh, a full list, uh, like the translation of the script that is on the official forums and the three new videos they put on the official Final Fantasy YouTube channel. Our next big bit of news is going to come at E3. Ooh, ooh I am fighting back a cough here. My, my voice is dying. I, I strongly apologize. Uh, th our next big piece of information is going to come at E3, where they are going to do a live reading of the patch notes. I believe we will have those patch notes ahead of time, but it is still ahead of early access for Heaven's Ward, so... Um, that may be the first revelation of those patch notes. Uh, so, look forward to that. I will definitely cover that. I will definitely cover uh, Final Fantasy when Heaven's Ward launches. I'll probably do dungeon guides and things like that. And boy, I hope my voice is back and I'm not all hopped up on cough medicine and just kind of rambling like I am now. Ooh, boy, I, I mean, you should... I'm like sweating and 
I don't even remember the start of this conversation. I, I hope that I didn't skip over any of my bullet points. Um, but I definitely wanted to just kind of say a couple of things about what they covered today. I know it was a really long presentation and uh, most people probably didn't have the time to sit through it. Uh, but it was really well done and I think the translators did a good job of doing a live translation. Uh, it's really, really hard to do that in the, like in the setting when you're sitting there in the same room with the person who's talking. Uh, so uh, I think they did a good job and I understand why they don't always do it. Um, but uh, thank you for tuning in for this video. Hopefully the next one I provide you will be a little bit more structured, a little bit less loopy, and uh, my voice will hopefully be a little bit less scratchy. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. If you'd like, you can subscribe to the channel, and you can follow me on Twitter at It's Boats, and my voice is really just about to cut out, so have a good day.